This is Rebecca Clark, episode 200, hitting milestone 200. This podcast is for anyone that knows they haven't yet found and offered up their best work, but are compelled to seek it out and do it. Are you ready to move your desk? Well, I have produced a couple hundred podcasts. It's pretty amazing. And at the same time, not, right? Because it was just one a week or three a week and then nothing for a couple of weeks. (laughs) But for the most part, I have done one podcast a week for the last three and a half years. So I wanted to just have a reflective podcast episode about it and share with you some things. So when I was very young, I had a nudge. It was a spiritual nudge that I should keep a record of my life. I'm very lucky that many of my relatives kept journals and some of them are typed up. Um, We have access to those um, back from a couple hundred years ago. And so there are some belief systems that I have in me, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but there are some beliefs that I have in me that would be really hard to shake because when I was very young, I heard stories from those journals from people before the internet, before they were interacting with the world, who shared very real experiences they had that caused them to behave in the way they did and to believe as they did. And those have become part of a rock solid part of my brain. Uh, So everything I do in life actually is from that basis. Now, I choose to rock that basis once in a while just to self-check. But as a result of hearing those stories and insights, and because of the spiritual nudges I had, I started writing in my journal at nine years old. My parents had a special evening where they introduced us to the idea of keeping a journal, and we received journals. So even though I started later than some of my siblings, I have been very judicious and committed, I guess, in keeping my journals. And at first they were very factual, right? Here's the weather for this week. I got this grade on my paper. Here are where we all sit in class at school. And I draw little desks and everything. I have a map of my first paper out in there. I have a piece of wallpaper from my first bedroom where I got to choose wallpaper and it was Holly Hobby. And I have different pictures and postcards from different trips my family took around the United States growing up. I have over 30 journals, but I think if you've listened to any other episodes, you know that some of those have been burned in a burn barrel in Idaho. (laughs) A lot of them I retyped. And then there's a point where I was like, why am I retyping some of this junk? Some of it was the same stuff over and over. So I'd keep a few representative pages of the same angst and then let it go. And at the same time, that's other journals where I copied word for word. Now I have gone through many years of typing journals and then I've discarded that and I'm back to paper uh, because I've decided that I want to be able to freely write out on paper and throw out when I want to. And what I'll do is I reread them every month or just various parts of the year. And I extract important things from that that I want to put in a personal life history that I'm creating. I do all these things because I care about documenting things, but I have learned how to care less about documenting and more about noticing from what I've documented, how I've grown and take that with me, right? So I don't need to keep all of the journals, but I will extract from there quotes or concepts and ideas or different facts that I want to take with me in a personal history. This is a process of de-junking my mind as I go. Some of you don't have this problem, I do. I want to document and keep it all. And now I'm learning to let go of some things if they are no longer useful and keep them in a way going forward where I'm not loading a bunch of garbage with me everywhere I live and move, right? And it's a very therapeutic process for me. It's probably um, what I use instead of therapy. And counseling, right? Um, Because that actually therapy and counseling is not my method of getting self-help. I get coached. I've done hypnotherapy. I've done a lot of different things. I do a lot of processing in this way. So that is to say that I have kept a lot of stories. I've kept a lot of lessons learned. 
I had documented it in writing and in typing and in audio in the past. And so doing a podcast was something very natural to me because all it is is audio or video and or video, right? It's just another way to write. It's just another way to speak. And of course, there's nuances to each of those. Uh, but I have enjoyed the process. I never set out to do a podcast. I never set out to try to get attention. Um, but that's something that can come along with this kind of thing. And some of it can be negative and positive. But what I love is that because I've decided to do a podcast and share some of the thoughts inside of me, I have then gotten to a point where I have been able to learn from mistakes, share those with others, learn from lessons, um, share insights about life and work. And then it's enabled me to connect to a few people. And I love that when I've connected to new people or even existing people in my life, they are excited to email me and say, hey, have you thought about this? I want to change your mind on something, or I want to add more details to the thought you shared, or can I come on and share some of my thoughts and insights? And I absolutely love that because I don't want to be a guru. I want to be someone who connects people to ideas and information that helps you up level. And when I started the podcast, I thought it's going to be all about work, right? Up leveling at work. And then I've gone through all of my experiences with all the different kinds of work that I've had since starting the podcast and realizing this is more about our life's work, our human performance, right? How can we fulfill the measure of our creation? And I did not make up that phrase. I love that quote because we all have this capacity within us. And I think we all have this inner inkling when we really stop and think about it and going, what is my full potential? What am I capable of? I know I don't look as pretty as that person over there. I know I'm not as strong or mentally sharp or whatever, but I've been given my own set of problems and gifts and challenges and insights and experiences that all make me, me. There's nothing else. There's no one else in the world like me, right? There's no one else in the world like you. And how do we learn to honor all of it? Knowing that in that process, we're going to hate parts of ourselves, We're going to love parts of ourselves, And we're going to wish that we were better at something um, and learning how to show up either way, no matter how we feel. And so I've really loved the journey of this process. In parallel to the journey, um, there's been a lot of hard stuff in my life and a lot of good stuff, right? Before I started the podcast, I actually think I quit my government job uh, one month before I started the podcast. And in the process of quitting, uh, a friend had told me about a podcast. I listened to a few episodes and I'd listened to it walking around a track at work that last month. And I just on a whim signed up for coaching school. And I learned so much through that. And it was interesting that as I encountered certain life challenges, there would be the perfect lesson in that particular week that I needed to get through those life challenges. And so even though you sign up to be a coach, you are also signing up to learn more about yourself and work through all of those inconsistencies and those parts of you that you don't like and those addictions and weaknesses. I tried lots of different kinds of work in the last three and a half years while I've been doing this podcast. I've been a consultant. I, I actually homeschooled for a quite a long while during the COVID era. And my son started kindergarten uh, late, a couple months late, but that's not a problem for him. <laughs> he has other things he gets to learn in life. I was an online instructor for project management for students around the world. That was an amazing experience, especially the first couple times through. But then after that, I realized I don't like correcting 400 of the same assignment every week. And I really love that in sharing that with my sister, we were driving from Utah down to Phoenix, Arizona. I still remember she shared with me in a moment. She's like, well, of course you didn't like that, Rebecca. We used to go on these midnight walks um, in Indiana and when we were home from college um, in the summers. And she said that, uh, I never like to take the same route twice. She's like, no, no, let's go down this other street. And she would want to take the same route. I'm like, no, no, let's see what's down here. Let's try this one. And to realize that there's more explorer in me than I thought. And um, to really 
notice that now and step into it more to experiment and explore um, toward finding and refining processes and that kind of thing. I also had some sickness at the beginning of COVID, but then ironically during the virus season, I wasn't sick at all. And I was in great shape and pretty healthy through most of it uh, until the last few months where I kind of, uh, after getting a full-time job <laughs> again, uh, lost control of some of my habits and went through a lot of more emotional struggles as I discovered things about myself and felt new shame for things I hadn't been aware of before. And it might not seem big to anyone if I were to tell them why I was ashamed, but for me, it was a big deal because it was something in many moments where I'd realize, oh, I'm not as strong as I think I am. Oh, I'm not as wise as I think I am in making certain decisions and to go through the struggle of that shame. I'm lucky that along with coaching and consulting and working online as an instructor and, and going back to full-time employment, that I also got to travel a lot around the United States, uh, especially in the Western United States, got to climb a few mountains with lots of kids, which is different than just climbing a mountain <laughs> with a couple of friends and to see new sites and places that I had been many times. Most of my growing up, I'm lucky to have lived in all parts of the United States, the Western States, I've lived in Nebraska and I've lived in the Midwest and I've lived in the East and just in Thailand also. So only one um, other country. But I got to visit Canada and Mexico as a result of traveling a lot in the United States and living a lot in the United States. But I lived in Idaho for a little bit and I surprised at the places I went to see that I hadn't seen, even though I've been to Idaho almost every other year of my entire life because I my grandmother is from there and my grandfather was from Wyoming and they settled there and raised their children. But to be able to realize that I had access to all of this my whole life and I took it for granted. And over the last few years, Idaho has become a place that I go to um, where I feel at home for some reason. And I'm lucky to own a little part of a property with some of my siblings in Idaho now. So I'm like, okay, I've got a piece of Idaho, um, regardless of how often I can visit or if I ever live there. Uh, I'm sure it's part of my life at some point, right? <laughs> but I've been learning a lot too during this time, during this podcast. And I think that's the cool part of deciding to commit to something like this, right? Because you know that when you approach life, that you're going to be sharing it with people. And so I kind of think it's in the back of my head all the time, right? That, oh, maybe I should talk about this on the podcast, or maybe I should bring someone on to talk about this. I'm kind of finding this interesting. During this time, I said I learned about coaching, but I continually to learn, continue to learn from a lot of books. And I love that because of the podcast, I think even more so than before, I buy books from people I know that have bothered to write a book. And I forget, I've written a couple of books and I don't actively share that. Um, and I will write some more because it's the process of writing one that forces you to think through some things about yourself, that think about things about the world, to figure out if you're not being open-minded to certain information, and then to go summarize it and share from it what you've learned in a book. It's a very powerful process. And I see a lot of people doing this now, and it's hilarious because I think the most common book writers that I have run into are people who've gone through a drastic change in life or well, I shouldn't say or, and mothers who are having a baby or have just had a baby. There's this, this extreme amount of creativity and energy that seems to come. And I know that that's when I wrote most of mine, um, right before that time period and right during it and completed after it. Very fascinating. Um, there's something about the birth of new life that brings to birth also new ideas and energy um, for some people. Right. But I just know, and when there's critical changes, critical health problems, critical um, coming over a depression or working through an addiction or something, people are very compelled um, to take newfound knowledge and change in them and share it. And being a podcaster puts me in a position to constantly be exposed to that with others and constantly expose myself to it because I am a continuous learner. 
And I want to keep doing that. And now I'm doing it less from the approach of trying to get more degrees and certifications and more of just what's the next thing I need to work on today. I purposely wore this shirt today because I'm a little uncomfortable because I've always had these rings around my neck. I signed up for a little course to learn about neck yoga, (laughs) $19, right? And that kind of, in a nutshell, explains what I have gone through the last couple of years, even more so than before, because I like to explore and experiment. Coaching, consulting, I have had some energy healing sessions. I have tried out hypnotherapy. I have tried different sports. I have revisited other sports. I have been open to learning from people that I hadn't been open to learning from before. I have knocked down personal belief barriers and rebuilt some of them, right? Or come to some beliefs from a new perspective. And I'll talk about that in an upcoming episode where I have a very strong belief system, but I will tell you that I feel it's strong because I'm constantly learning from people from a wide variety of beliefs, that are different from my own. I don't sit around learning all day from people that are from my same religion or from my same background. I choose to learn from people from all different types of lives because it informs my belief system. It It's actually made my faith stronger in my own, but it's richer and deeper as a result of it. So interesting, at least to me. <laughs> and so I am in a moment right now where I am thinking about who's the next Becca, who's the next Rebecca. And to really get honest with myself, with my personality tests, right? I've had so many, partially because I had a psychology minor. I was going to be a major, but as a minor. So I've had tons of psychology tests over the years and I choose to revisit them each time saying, Rebecca, look at yourself as you are, what you actually default to, not the pie in the sky, right? Like of what I hope I would be, what am I? And how do I learn to go? How do I honor who I am? How do I go? But I don't want to be that thing. I want to become something else and to look into it and see what does it take to be that other person? And a lot of times I find that I'm learning that there's more refining that needs to take place, that I'm really stepping into learning something about myself I didn't know about before and to adjust some things. So something else I want to talk about, which I haven't talked about much because I feel like I had more to learn is being a man and being a woman and the masculine and feminine energies. And there's a whole lot that's going on in the world where um, it's very confusing to people. And a lot of people that are stepping into promoting certain things Um, may not realize that that might be important for them to learn, but it may not be important for the next generation. I think one of these things has to do with feminism. Um, That might be very important for some women to feel like they approach feminism in a certain way for more rights and to be a big boss and to have this cause, you know, for more women. Uh, But the reality is, is all these boys that are being raised now weren't part of whatever issue or system that some women feel they were a part of. So what does that do to them? And that's a very hard topic to talk about um, because when I make a single comment or two, even to friends, I get a lot of pushback. And so I want to be very thoughtful in how I approach talking about those things because I have some new awareness for myself in this area and I'm trying to balance that. Right. And so for myself, if you listen to any other episodes, you know that I am an alpha female deep down. And I've mistaken that, I think, over the years for having to show up and act certain ways. And now I'm learning how to step into being a strong alpha female while also accessing that feminine energy because I want to be feminine. I want to honor that there's a masculine energy in the world that is needed, um, that are the protectors. And It's just an interesting topic, but I want to be able to talk about that on my own. I want to be able to talk about that with others that are willing to push back on me, that are willing to change their mind because I'm willing to change mind and to be able to use podcasting as one of the forums to address that topic. So interesting. I'm kind of going off in some different directions, but these are some of the experiences and the lessons I'm having going through as I podcast. And that's why I want to make it very clear for you 
as you do your endeavors too, that when you say something like I'm saying, like I'm Rebecca and I am a podcaster, that that is a very deep statement to me. That's just not me showing up on a camera or video and spouting some words. That's me coming to the table, having gone through a reflective process, having listened to 50 books a year, having had private conversations with some people. Some of these conversations have been six hours long on the phone. It's amazing. And that's the struggle that I have to figure out how to deal with going forward is how do I continue to have the depth and breadth and richness of what I get to experience by being a podcaster while also needing to have an income of some sort, right? And I take crazy risks right, with some things, right? Um, I got laid off and I decided that I was using all of that money for self-care and learning and trusting that ne other needs would be provided in other ways. And they've been provided for, right? In ways that were beyond my understanding when I was laid off. Sometimes it means you have to take out the 401k. Sometimes it means you have to use every penny you have toward changing it up. But I have done that before. And I did that during the time that I've been podcasting. And I will tell you, and it's amazing what is available to us if we have a little faith as we go through hard things. It's amazing what friends are there for you and what family are there for you. And I am beyond abundantly blessed in that department. I'm from a large family. And that the family that my family came from was large. So I have hundreds of people at my disposal. And every day that I have a conversation now with a friend, I am so grateful. I'm like, how is it possible that I have so many close friends? I'm someone that didn't grow up with a lot of friends. And I've talked about shyness before, but I'm so grateful for that shyness because it's taught me some empathy and compassion. And that's a different episode I want to share with you. I wrote it out the other night. I got up, I couldn't sleep because I was perplexed as to why I still have certain thoughts about myself. And I realized that I need to stop talking about myself as being shy because I'm no longer as shy. It creeps up. It creeps up in social interactions sometimes. But that's part of me, but that's not all of me going forward. So many thoughts to share. So what's the future of the podcast? I was tempted to stop the podcast in January. And then I had an amazing conversation with my brothers. Actually, I had a couple of amazing conversations. And I had a couple of other experiences which taught me, you know what, Rebecca, this is one of your ways of helping yourself and helping others. So I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to become a better interviewer. I want to study some interviewers and see why they're so good at interviewing. I want to be a better interviewer, to be able to sit there and hold space for you when you share your story and be able to ask questions that make you think and me think and listeners go, oh, I'm so glad that that question was asked because it enabled that person to share a part of themselves that they don't often get to share. So I'm going to have more guests because I'm learning how to interview and I'm going to step into other possibilities. I started out thinking I'd only help people up level at work, talking about career and jobs. Now I've realized I care about the entire human, the whole human performance. And so you're going to hear me talking a lot about the whole mind, body, and spirit. You're going to hear me talking about the lotions and potions I've tried and how I went to a spa and tried a couple things and what works and what doesn't. I'm going to tell you about my health journey, my wellness, my uh, losing weight, my choice of sports, and all the things I'm willing to try. I made a new goal this week that I want to try like a couple new things a week, things that are old and things that are new. So for example, I've forgotten how to solve the Rubik's Cube. I want to relearn how to do that because I used to be able to solve it. And I solved two sides of the six sides, the a couple months ago. And it shocked me. It's like, wait, how did I do it? <laughs> it was a total fluke. I want to solve all sides of it. I want to get more into martial arts because I've always had a love of martial arts. I just think it looks beautiful, but it's strong and it shows self-control. There's art and science and physicality and psychology all mixed into one. I think it's beautiful. 
I've watched the Ip Man series twice on Netflix because I just, there's such a strength to it. I want to be part of it. I'm taking my son to try out some jujitsu because we read these books about kids being warriors, right? From a guy, a former Navy SEAL. And I loved lots of the lessons in it because of course, every time an adult reads a children's book, they learn lessons too, if they choose to. Sometimes I admit I tune out. <laughs> I read the adult version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea to my son last fall. Oh my word. There were so many words I couldn't pronounce. I didn't know what half those things in the sea were, but wow, I read it. And in reading it, I realized I'd never read the full adult version before. I had read the summarized or the simple kids versions, right? What an honor to read that. And I've read Swiss Family Robinson, Island of the Blue Dolphins, all these books, hundreds of books to my son, um, sometimes an hour a night. And sometimes when I was homeschooling, I read three hours a day. Um, we very quickly went into adult books, um, very young. I can't remember everything that I read, but he remembers a lot of it. And so all of that I bring to my journey of sharing with you. I'm not very good at summarizing the facts and that kind of thing, but I want you to know that I take it all in. There's no, never a, too much information for me to take in. The hard part is spitting out uh, because my lowest score on the ACT was a 22 in English. <laughs> And then in the, in the personality or the test where you take the intelligence, the 11 parts of intelligence, guess what my lowest is? It's language. So isn't that interesting? That's my lowest score. And yet I'm a podcaster. It shows that sometimes hidden in our weakness, there can be something that serves us and serves others. Okay. This was my second recording of this. The microphone was not at the proper place by my chin, I guess, yesterday. And so I recorded this again. It should be interesting to see which episode I use or if I can take pieces and parts from yesterday's to bring to you today. I can assure you they are two different episodes <laughs> from the same notes. Let that be another lesson. Okay. I enjoy providing these for myself because I do listen to my own podcast because I want to hear what I said. And I enjoy sharing these to open a space for you to think, ah, maybe I'll get on the show sometime with Becca and share my thoughts. We need to hear your voice. We need to hear it from the seven-year-old you're going to hear on some episodes, and we need to hear it from the centenarian. Okay. And if you want to hear about an awesome centenarian, listen to episode 100 about my grandfather. I would only talk about one grandfather, but I need to start talking about the other one because the one grandfather was the explorer and the trier of different things. He even flew over to experience some energy healers over there in uh, the Philippines or Malaysia or something. He found that they were quacks in that particular case, but he was willing to do it, right? My other grandfather was a metallurgical, metallurgical engineer and my grandmother was a technical writer. So both of them were government contractors, right? And they lived all around the country and they were completely different in wonderful ways than the grandparents that were out there in Idaho. Okay, enough about me. We need you to step forward and share your story on the podcast. You can share your whole story or just a part of it, how you've up-leveled or how you've gotten to be more satisfied for who you are right now. You can share about work, about life. You can share about health or your depression. You can share however you are viewing human performance. I encourage you to think about one last idea. You are wonderful just the way you are, right? With all the good, the bad, and the ugly. But what if you could move forward, not from a place of judging yourself, of being not enough, but from a place of saying, you know what, I am curious about my full potential, about my full capability. I am curious about what it would feel like to fulfill the measure of my creation. Think about it. Join me on the journey.
Okay. I'm going to stop talking because guess what? I have three classes today. I have a neck yoga class. I have one that's going to help me with my personal brand. And I have another one. Oh, it's not quite a class. It's someone I'm talking to about doing some coaching. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. And I probably have some inconsistencies in this episode. And I'll probably leave them in just so you know that they're there. Okay. I hope you have a great day. I hope you keep moving your mental desk and your physical desk if needed and offer up your best work. I will talk to you soon. That is for sure.